you heard of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Ramakrishna became a devotee of Kali. Kali is a form of goddess, a fierce goddess. He took Kali as his mother and worshipped her. He is such a devotee. He became, in such a way his consciousness became so crystallized that if he makes lunch for Kali, that form comes and eats with him. This is not imagination, this is actually happening. Or oh, is she sitting somewhere? That's not the point. A crystallized consciousness can just create it, just make it happen the way it is known to him. So he actually used to feed her and she used to eat, food used to get empty. She's danced in front of him, she ate from his own hands, she came when he called and she left him dripping with ecstasy. This was real, it was actually happening. You could have tested him if you wanted chemically, he was all ecstasy. <clears throat> One day he was sitting on the banks of Ganga, I'm sorry, the… the Hooghly River and a very great yogi, a rare yogi, very few like that have ever happened. Totapuri came this way because though Ramakrishna's body, mind and emotion was dripping with ecstasy, his being was longing to go beyond this ecstasy. Because somewhere there is an awareness that, that that itself is a bondage. When I tell people simple things about their lives, when I say everybody has the choice right now to be either this way or that way, people say, that's easy for you Sadhguru, you are aware. Tell me who is not aware? Please look at yourself and see. Even in an extreme moment of emotion or anger, there is a spot of awareness even in you, isn't it so? Isn't it there? If it is not there, that means you've become pathologically ill. Otherwise, even in the most extreme moments of emotion within you, there is one dot of awareness. It is just that you are empowering the emotion because you have an investment there you are not empowering the awareness, that's all. Have you ever had a situation in your life, there was not even a, a spot of awareness in you? It was always there, it is just that you did not invest on that. You betted… you… you are… you are betting on the wrong horse. You are betting on the horse that you are used to, a known horse. So, because of your friendship with your anger, friendship with your love, friendship with pleasure, friendship with whatever sweet emotions that can happen within you, you're investing on that. You are not investing on that tiny spot of awareness which has always been there with you. There is nobody who has not been aware, there is nobody who is not aware. It is just that most people have not empowered their awareness. They have empowered something else, so accordingly life is happening. So Ramakrishna was longing somewhere, but the sweetness of ecstasy that he is experiencing was too much to leave and go. This is not any different. This shouldn't be misunderstood, but this is not any different from a drunker being addicted to his drink, a drug addict being addicted to some substance, it is not any different. The only thing that is different is, alcohol and drug may be damaging the system. This may not be damaging the system because this is internal. 
but the addiction is same, the attachment is same, the longing for that is same. And the limitation is also same, it's beautiful, there's no question about it. So, Ramakrishna, whenever he had contact with Kali, his object of devotion, he would be dripping with ecstasy and he was fine with that. He didn't want to leave the beauty of that and move on. So when Totapuri came, this transpired between them. Totapuri said, this is very simple, you have the necessary energy. You just have to empower your awareness. You are empowering your emotion, you are empowering your body, you are empowering the chemistry within you. You are not empowering your awareness. So Ramakrishna said, okay, I will empower my awareness and sit like this. The moment he has a vision of Kali, he's again gone into uncontrollable states of love and ecstasy. Any number of times he sat down, but the moment he sees Kali, he just flies off. Then Thothapuri sat down. Next time Kali appears, you have to take a sword and cut her into pieces. Ramakrishna asked, where do I get the sword from? Totapuri said, from the same place where you get Kali from. If you are able to create a whole Kali, why can't you create a sword? You can do it. If you are able to create a goddess, why can't you create a sword to cut her? Get ready. Ramakrishna sat, the moment Kali came, he burst into ecstasy and forgot about the sword and the awareness and everything. So, Thotapuri told him, you sit this time, the moment Kali comes, see here he picked up a piece of glass and he said, with this piece of glass, I am going to cut you where you are stuck, that I am going to cut. When I cut that, you create the sword and cut Kali down. So he, when Ramakrishna was just on the edge of ecstasy when Kali appeared in his vision. Thotapuri took a piece of glass and cut him really deep across his forehead. Then Ramakrishna created the sword and cut Kali down and he became free from the mother and the ecstasy of feeding off her. And that's when he truly became a Paramahamsa. Till then, he was a lover, he was a devotee, he was a child to the mother goddess that he created. So, insects are getting closer to me than anybody. Who knows? Who he is, you don't know. <laughs> so this is not something that you go about making distinction between what is reality and what is illusion. You don't do that. Whatever is happening within you, it doesn't matter what's happening within you. You keep your steer steering wheel straight. As I've been telling you for the last… Uh, some time now, you keep your direction straight. Whatever is happening within you, it doesn't matter. You just gas it and gas it and gas it. As long as you're traveling straight, you just keep the throttle down. Illusion is happening keep the throttle down, reality is happening, keep the throttle down. You are hallucinating, keep the throttle down. Don't let go of the gas pedal, just down and down and down, that's all. That's your business. Rest I will take care. Your business is to 
put your right foot down, not the other one. <laughs> Just the right foot down all the time. See, left foot up, right foot down. If you put this down, this may… this may touch the brakes or the clutch, then you will simply rev in the same place, you won't go anywhere. <laughs> All the time, a lead… a leaden foot down, whatever is happening. Illusion is happening, gas it. Reality is happening, gas it. God is happening, gas it. Devil is happening, gas it. You have to break through all of that. You don't think, okay, this is reality, let me settle down here, this is illusion, let me discard this. No, you just gas your way through all that, it doesn't matter. You don't try to decipher what is illusion, what is reality. The moment you try to do that, it'll become endless intellectual circus. Too much circus it will lead to, an endless circus and a purposeless circus because it'll not get you anywhere. It will make you look smart among people, but existence will see you as stupid because it doesn't open its doors for you. It doesn't matter how smart you are with people, how… how smart you are in the society. This existence will not open it, its doors, it will open its doors only to the smartest. And the smartest is also the dumbest, really. So shall I be dumb? You can't be dumb, just say that. If you try to be dumb, you're trying to be smart, isn't it? Do you see this? Do you see you can't try to be stupid? If you're acting stupid, that means you're trying to be smart, isn't it so? You're being super smart. So you can't do that. That's why I say, always, whatever is happening, see that you're stupid because you can't do that. You can't do nothingness, isn't it? You can't do… you can do something, you cannot do nothingness. You can be a somebody, but you cannot be a nobody. I am a nobody is a great assertion of your somebodyness, isn't it? You can't do it. When you tire and simply sit quietly, it happens. Your effort has to tire or you need phenomenal intelligence to go beyond effort. Right now, whatever is happening, you're only trying to get out of it. You're driving through the mountain, you're trying to get out of it. You're driving through wonderful plains, you're trying… wanting to… hurrying up to get out of it. All the time, gas pedal down. Wherever you are, however beautiful it is, as quickly as possible you want to get out of it. That should be your intention, always. However wonderful it is, you're in God's lap, you must be getting out of it as quick as possible. If you're doing that constantly, then you will get to that ultimate stupidity where you don't have to try to be smart, you've given up on that, then you're at ease, absolute ease. Life is at ease. When this life becomes… comes to absolute ease, then the whole existence is wide open, no door is closed, everything is open just everything, creation and creator is accessible to you simply because this has come to ease, total ease.